I don't feel like I'm in the right place. The, the, the register isn't here. I mean, that's the first thing I looked at when I came here to make sure that they had the, the botan candy that I wanted. And, and then our friend Shang standing there. You know, people, a lot of people said he was kind of a stern guy, but to us, he was family. Where the bar is now, used to be our favorite booths for some reason. They, they had partition booths here and they had black curtains and they would put me in these big old wooden high chairs with a wooden table. One of the very first solid foods that I got to eat was hamu and rice. So that was my baby food. <laughs> Booth number five here has a lot of significance for me because this is where I brought my wife on our first time we came here. And uh, once she saw the outside of the restaurant, she didn't want to come in because it was, she could see it was noisy and dark in here. She'd never been to Little Tokyo before. And I told her, this is our favorite restaurant. And we came in here to booth number five, sat down and she said, are we really going to eat here? I don't like this place. You know, she saw the dark walls, the dark booths, I said, let me order, see how you like the food. <clears throat> she, she sat there, mm -hmm. this guy likes this restaurant, maybe I'm not going to go with him anymore. But then the food came and she loved it. She, she said it was so much better than any of the Chinese food that she'd had at Fresno or in her own hometown. So that's when I realized she was a keeper. <laughs> In this little patio here, there used to be cages of ducks, chickens, and uh, pigeons stacked maybe six cages high. And I asked one of the waiters, oh, you keep these as pets for eggs? And he says, no, we, we kill them and we cook them for you. Uh, oh, <laughs> the current owners did a great job of restoring the place and they had to adapt to current times. But, it, at least it's here, you know, at least this restaurant is here, Little Tokyo is here, and uh, I try to do whatever I can to help them stay here, you know, it, it's our heritage. And we used to have all of our banquets and funeral gatherings and wedding banquets up there in the mezzanine, and I remember standing up there and looking down at all the people eating seeing what they were eating compared to what we were eating. But that was our, their big gathering place up there. Oh yeah, oh, oh, wow. This brings back memories. Wow, you know, this seems so small now, but 200 people fit in here. They had long tables along here and then over here. Right after World War II, my parents and her, um, on the Nishio side and on my mom's side, had nothing when they came back from the camps. So they would come to Far East Cafe and uh, look Mar and the others would say, Order whatever you want um, when you when you can pay. You know, pay us. So <clears throat> meant a lot to the family. The owners, the Zhang family, was really special. They took care of us. And you know, right after World War II, I remember going to restaurants and being refused service, but here we felt safe. We could come, welcome like family. It was a haven. Yeah, it's not just a restaurant, it's family, a special place. Join us on Friday, March 4th for Grateful Crane's virtual community fundraiser as we come together in honor of our Issei and Nisei, all thanks to our friends at Panda Express. So whether it's a family meal, plate, bowl, or a la carte, 
Join the fun on March 4th as we honor our ancestors. And chow down on Chow, chow Man! Man. Mm. <laughs>